Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. I know I've kind of been MIA and haven't really posted a tour video on this channel in quite a while, but it's been kind of difficult to travel and shoot these tour videos with everything going on here in Canada and pretty much the rest of the world, as you guys know. But things are starting to get better. Things are starting to open back up again. So I'm glad to be back here today doing another one of these tour videos. So for today's video, I've got a very special cabin tour for you guys. I drove all the way up to Quebec and I'll be exploring the beautiful region of Domaine Charlevoix and I'll be staying at the Nature Sport Villa. The area itself is filled with breathtaking landscapes and there are a ton of things to do around here. And I wanna show you guys why I think the cabin that I'm staying at is one of the most luxurious and accommodating places around here. So without further ado, let's get into it. To kick things off, I thought I'd hand over the introduction of today's video to the owner of the cabin, Richard. I figured he knows the location much better than I do, so he'll be able to give you guys a better overview of where we are and what the area has to offer. Take it away, Richard. Bonjour tout le monde, vous allez bien? Mon nom c'est Richard Leoulier. Bienvenue, euh, c'est la Villa Sport Nature. On est à Baie-Saint-Paul, dans la région de Charlevoix. C'est magnifique. Euh, les gens qui ne connaissent pas la région, ça vaut vraiment la peine de venir visiter la région de Charlevoix. Ici au domaine Charlevoix, c'est très varié. J'ai ma maison à moi ici euh, que vous avez vue et euh, il y a des sentiers pédestres où est-ce qu'on peut se promener en raquette l'hiver ou à pied l'été. Il y a un petit lac euh, nature. Il y a également le parc nature ici pour les enfants. Donc c'est super intéressant. Uh, thank you George for, uh, for this uh, filming. And we're here in Charlevoix. This is Bay Saint Paul. And you can enjoy my cabin here any time of the year. During winter, there's snowshoeing you guys could do. You could do a lot of uh, walking around during summer. There's a little lake over there. And my cabin has everything included here for you guys. Yeah, the wood, the wooden fire. You can have the spa. It's available all the time during the year. And also uh, plenty of amenities inside to make it easy for you and come and visit my place. So there's a link that will be provided to you whenever you guys want to come down, feel free. Uh, we'll be welcome to uh, to welcome you guys here. Thank you very much. Merci, Richard. All right, let's get into the cabin. I'll start off with the living room and the kitchen. These two spaces are actually merged together to create a big common area. And Richard told me that he did this on purpose so that this could act as a nice, spacious, and shared place to hang out. And to emphasize this, there's so much seating available here. Check this out. So the biggest, most recognizable seating area in this space is the sectional. It can easily accommodate four people comfortably maybe five if you squeeze. But if that's not enough, there's also some seating available along the window, just across the sectional. And if that's still not enough, then you can always grab a seat at the dining table in the kitchen half of this area. No matter where you sit, you can still enjoy the company of your friends and family due to the open concept nature of this space. Since we're already in the kitchen, let's talk about its features. This is a proper full-size kitchen, no compromises here. You get a full-size refrigerator and freezer and an oven with electrical stovetop burners. You also get a big microwave that's built into the cabinets to free up the counter space below. There's also a dishwasher and a big industrial style sink, which I love. There's more than enough counter space for you to prepare your coffee and your meals. There's also a dedicated coffee station with a Nespresso machine, which makes really good coffee. You also have a four slice toaster on the other side of the countertop. Next, I wanna talk about the cabinets in the kitchen. There are a lot of cabinets. There are a bunch of overhead cabinets that house your dishes and glassware. And underneath the countertop, you get more cabinets for your utensils, pots, and trash bin. There's also more cupboard space on the far end as well to hold some dry food and extra dishes. One last thing I want to mention about this kitchen is look at how many electrical outlets there are here. There are four regular electrical outlets, and they even added an extension to this one to include an extra socket and two USB chargers. This is really appreciated, especially when you're cooking and trying to look up that recipe on your phone that you will definitely tell your friends that is yours. <laughs> okay, next let's talk about entertainment. There's a big TV that hangs in the corner along with a digital TV box and a DVD player, which are great options to have, but since most of us just stream nowadays, the TV also comes loaded with Netflix, so you don't miss any new episodes of your favorite show. Lighting is not an issue here, as you have spotlights built into the ceiling for when it's dark, and you also get these big windows to allow a lot of natural light in during the day. And speaking of windows, there are also some glass doors on the far end of the living space that lead us into the patio area, which we'll take a look at next. In the patio area, you'll notice it's completely enclosed with mesh on the window sills, which is great if you want to hang out on the deck without having to get eaten by mosquitoes. 
Next you'll notice this big table in the middle of the patio that seats six, so you can all enjoy your dinner on the patio if you choose to do so. And right next to the table, you'll find the barbecue, which you guys already know is a must in every cabin. One interesting feature I wanna mention about this patio is this light that hangs above the table. Well, it's not really a light, it's actually a heater lamp that warms up the area around the table, which is really useful if you were to book your stay here during the winter. To turn it on, you first have to hit the button on the power bar that's hanging on the wall next to the barbecue. Next, you set the amount of time you want the heater to stay on for. You then have to wave your finger over this power button on the bottom of the actual heater. I know it sounds complicated, but after you do it a couple of times, you get used to it. You can hang out on the patio all day long without freezing. That's a really clever idea. And I mentioned doors earlier because in addition to the door that we came in through from inside the cabin, there's also a screen door that takes us to the outer deck from the patio. Check this out. So once you go through the screen door and you enter the outer deck, you immediately see some benches which you can sit and relax on. But obviously one of the best features out here is the hot tub. Richard told me that he keeps the hot tub running all year round for his guests to enjoy, which is awesome. But he also mentioned that it's really nice, especially in the winter time when everything else is frozen and there's snow everywhere, yet you get to stay nice and toasty inside the hot tub, which is a truly unique juxtaposition. <laughs> Moving along outside, we also have the fire pit, which is open all year round as well, and the firewood is included. And there's also no shortage of seating around the fire pit. Check this out. You've got these awesome handmade log benches that fit about four people each. Then you've got the two Muskoka chairs right across from the benches. And if that's not enough seating space, you also have a regular bench off to the side of the house. One last thing I wanna mention about the outdoor area is that there are two hammocks hanging outside underneath the trees in front of the cabin. So you can lay down and relax and enjoy a nice book or watch YouTube videos on your phone or iPad. I tried it, the Wi-Fi still works out here. Okay, moving back inside, we'll head over to the bedrooms. There are two bedrooms in this cabin, which are pretty much the same size. I will say that the one on the far end has a bigger closet, so if you travel with extra baggage, this is the one to call dibs on. Having said that, we'll start here on the far end. It's very spacious and comfy in here. There's a queen-sized bed and a nightstand on each side of it. There's plenty of lighting, both artificial and natural. And there's that big closet I was talking about. I love the barn door that they used for the closet. It really ties in the rustic feeling of the cabin. And continuing the theme of electrical outlets, I counted five around this bedroom, which again is much appreciated because you don't have to worry about your charging cable not being able to reach a surface that you can place your device on. Okay, moving over to the other bedroom, it's pretty much the same layout with the bed, the nightstands, and the lighting. Again, you get a bunch of electrical outlets all around the room, and like I mentioned before, a closet that's about half the size of the other one. The last room in the cabin that I wanna go over is the bathroom. It's positioned in the middle of the cabin, so it's about the same distance from the bedrooms as it is from the living space. The first thing you notice in the bathroom is the amount of space it has. For a cabin, I think it's a perfectly sized bathroom with no compromises. On the right side, you have your toilet and your sink. You also have a mirror set up with special accent lights right above it, which comes in handy when you're getting ready. On the right side, you have the bathtub and shower, which is quite spacious. I'm a tall guy and I had no issues taking a shower in here. On the far end of the bathroom, you also have a laundry machine and dryer, which really comes in handy for longer stays. And as always, if you guys would like to stay here, I'll leave a link down in the description. There's a few ways that you can get in contact with Richard, so I'll leave all the ways that I know how to contact him so you guys can stay in this awesome cabin. All right, that wraps up the video for today. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm very grateful that I got to come up here to Quebec to explore these new territories and to experience these beautiful landscapes. I can't wait to come back to see the rest of it. Thank you, Richard, and thank you, Domaine Chalabois. And thank you guys, again. I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.